Hi, everybody. My name is Brian LaRue. I'm the co-founder of Arc.Codes, which is a tool for deploying serverless applications to AWS, and Begin.com, which is a tool for CI CD to AWS. And today, I am here to talk to you about putting Deno into production. You might be asking yourself, what the hell is Deno? It's a good question. Deno is a next generation JavaScript runtime uh, from the creators of Node.js, which is not controversial uh, at all. I think uh, it's great, in fact, that we finally got some competition for Node on the back end and uh, bringing JavaScript to more places. So uh, it's less baggage of the past is always a good thing. More competition is always a good thing, especially for a JavaScript program. So knowing with a little bit about what Deno is, you're probably asking, well, why the hell should I care? And that too is a good question. And Deno is important to you because it's got a lot of qualities that uh, do make it interesting compared to the available options for uh, server side or back end JavaScript. And uh, that's what we're going to get into in the talk today. So the first thing I'm going to show you is a completely ridiculous benchmark that's going to make everybody angry. So this is showing uh, console.log in Node and in Deno. In both cases, I'm evaluating the result and I'm, I'm putting it through a system timer. And we can see Node's a little bit slower. Now, console.log is not a realistic program. This is a very synthetic benchmark, and I acknowledge that. Uh, what we're testing here is the cold start, the startup time of a, a trivial program. And so this is testing the cold start of the runtime, the, the application runtime, not the application. So the reason this is important to you, things are moving serverless. Things are moving towards single purpose, uh, distributed, stateless little functions. And these stateless little functions uh, are started up out of you know, nothing. They're cold. And if you have a slow cold start, you have a slow program. Um, it won't scale quickly and might even fall apart. Um, Node.js is probably one of the best serverless runtimes today. And uh, Deno is proving to be about twice as fast on cold start. This is trivial stuff and probably won't matter for most applications, but a large application, those milliseconds could add up. And this uh, will keep things compelling. And it's going to keep these uh, runtimes honest. They're going to keep getting faster, which is great for us as JavaScript programmers. And the next part uh, is often invoked for fuddy reasons, uh, and that's security. And I think this is actually uh, genuinely a really good thing to to be thinking about today. Right now, a node can do whatever node can do on your program, uh, and your program can do it to your system. So when you install a node program, um, it's kind of got carte blanche. With Deno, uh, we have to tell it explicitly what features we're going to give it access to, and it splits those features up by disk, um, network, and uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. In this example, at the bottom of the screen, you can see I've got a tiny little Deno program. Uh, you'll also notice there's no dependencies, which is pretty great. All this stuff is built in. And we're just going to encode a text file that says hello world. And kind of underneath the header here, I've got Deno run index TS. And it falls apart. Permission denied. We did not have the ability to write to disk, and so it wouldn't run that program. So I had to run it again with the flag. Uh, allow write, or or you can allow all by just doing capital A, and wrote our program, or wrote our text file, run our program and wrote our text file. So that's cool. Uh, that is a feature that I think will be increasingly important to folks that are security conscious, and it's just a nice thing to have. Now the big daddy here, Deno supports TypeScript out of the box. Everyone's loving TypeScript these days, and with good reason. And the reason this is important to you right now. It not only supports TypeScript, but it includes JSX and TSX files, which is dope. So we can write our programs with React, and they're going to run without a build step, which is quite nice. Uh, not the build step is that bad, but it's, it's great to have this just built in. Also great to have built in are web standards. This one makes me particularly excited. Uh, Deno is sometimes described as a web browser for your terminal, which I really like a lot. Um, first thing you'll notice, we've got ES modules built in uh, out the gate. We've got Wasm built in out the gate. We've got Fetch built in out the gate. And a whole bunch of other browser globals are built in, like alert, confirm, and prompt. 
And this means more of your code is going to be portable uh, without transpiling steps. And so that means your code will be both portable and debuggable, which is really nice. Demo comes with a bunch of built-ins also that are normally user land concerns. So in the Node ecosystem, the idea is uh, that the core is very small and that we abdicate a lot of the normal uh, functionality and tooling to user land to compete over. And this has been great for innovation. There's been tons of change and tons of competitive products. It's been kind of terrible for putting stuff together. There's no vertical integration. And a lot of this stuff is commodity. And you shouldn't be arguing with your team over linter rules or testing or bundling or formatting. This is all uh, stuff that should just be handled for you. And so Deno does handle all this for you. Um, it has a built-in linter, a built-in tester, built-in formatter, and built-in bundling. It's also got a really comprehensive standard library. In fact, I'm going to jump out and uh, pop pop a web browser. Let's go to Safari. It's not my wild man. I'm going to go to deno.land. I do recommend you check out deno.town. And uh, we'll check out the manual, runtime API, standard library, and third party modules. So this is pretty cool. So Deno comes with like a nice manual that walks you through the various features. So check that out. It's like a book. And because it's, it itself uses TypeScript fairly extensively, it's got amazing docs right out of the box. You know, we know uh, what everything requires. Great documentation about how to use these things. And it's Almost like a mashup of the Go standard library or runtime library and the browser runtime library, uh, which is, it's neat. All this stuff is just built in. Uh, normally, you'd be in NPM installing tons of programs uh, just to do simple stuff. And in Deno, this is all just there for you. And if it's not in the runtime, there's also a standard library, which is hosted by them. Um, these are... Frankly, quite kind of a greatest hits album of, of the NPM registry. Just anything you can think of that you needed or wanted out of NPM is going to be in this standard library uh, version by default and handled by, by the Deno project, which is pretty great. So you're not arguing to team over which UUID library or which hashing functions or whatever. Too much in here to go through, but one other one worth noting, they are building a Node.js compatibility layer they still have a ton of work to do on it, but if you're uh, looking for an open source project to get some commits into, this is this might be a really great one to try out. And then, sort of finally, just like uh, with npm, there is a registry and there are um, user land modules. But still, you know, there's 1,300 modules, so this is a great time to get in at the ground floor. Uh, there's I don't know how many modules in npm, but there's a lot more than a thousand. And because so much is built in, you might not need all this stuff, um, but it's, it's worth checking out. Yeah, so really comprehensive. Things are just built in, which is, which is really great. Um, so we're going to run a little Deno program in production, and, uh, and then we'll pop back and see how that went. Let's go take a look at an application. Uh, that I built for signing in with Slack. And so this is just a common OAuth user flow or click the sign in with Slack button, takes us to Slack. Slack's eventually going to load this OAuth page. It's you know, asking for some information about me. I'm going to hit allow. That's going to send a request back to my local server with a code which Deno is going to use to exchange for a OAuth token, which it gets uh, my Slack info. And now I'm signed in. And if we reload the page, I'm still signed in. And I can sign back out. Pretty cool. So let's take a look at the code that made all that happen. just in my Deno SSR application folder. And we'll start at the very, very sort of top here. Um, 
I've got a package JSON in a demo project. And the reason I'm doing that is we're using Architect to deploy it. Uh, Architect, so this is a dependency. Uh, we have a NPM script here for starting a local developer sandbox. We're letting Architect know that we're using the demo runtime and that we want to have three Lambda functions. And the first Lambda function is going to be for logging in. It's going to point at this folder back in login. Second Lambda function is going to be for logging out. It's going to point to back end log out. And then the last Lambda function will just intercept any traffic at all. And we'll pump that into the front end as it should be. Uh, this app has a .env file for the environment variables for the OAuth handlers. So we've got a Slack client ID, Slack client secret, and a Slack redirect. You can get these by going to api.slack.com, signing up it creating an application and get your keys. We'll start the front end of this app and just have a, a look at that. So index.ts is the entry file to our, our front end um, Lambda handler and it's named handler and everything. So this is a TypeScript file and uh, we're gonna respond with headers that we're gonna be generating HTML. We're gonna give it a HTTP status code of 200. And we're gonna tell it to do the render. And this is a JSX file, which is pretty cool. So uh, here we're pulling in uh, the ES builds of React and React DOM server. And um, we're using a library for encoding a JWT token. And then we pull in our app itself. Uh, from our components folder. So if we, we look at the actual render function here, we're gonna get the session. We're gonna grab the client ID and the redirect environment variables. If the session looks good, we're just gonna use that for props. And if the session doesn't look good, we're gonna get the client ID and the redirect and we'll pass that as props to our app. And we're just gonna render that app to string. And uh, Bob's your uncle. Getting the sessions a little bit hairy. We're, we're going to parse out the cookies from the request. And when we find the cookie, my session, uh, we're going to encode the value of that cookie as a JWT token. Uh, or rather, we're going to verify that it's a JWT token. We're going to get the value of it. So let's go take a look at the app. Um, you'll notice here that we're using Deno types to pull in the React. Um, type defs, I just copied those in, make it easier uh, to use. TSX or JSX, but TSX is actually um, optional. You can just do JSX as you can see, so you don't have to do the TypeScript thing if you don't want to. Um, but I think sometimes you'll want to. Anyways, uh, the app gets props, and if, you know, this is, could have been a Boolean is logged in, but we're just looking for an avatar. If the avatar is there, we'll show the protected route. And if it's not, we'll show the unprotected one. And uh, this component is about as silly and easy as you can see, like just hard-coded href to log out. Uh, nothing really very special about the Slack button. All this is is a, an href to the Slack API uh, OAuth endpoint. So that's it. Um, that's the front end, uh, 30 lines of code. So we'll take a look at the back end next. You'll notice there's no compile step here either. This is just pure, pure code. So logging out's pretty easy in Deno land uh, with API Gateway being our, our, our web server. Uh, we just have to pass it a cookie and uh, we're going to expire that cookie. This is how you do that in Deno Lamb with the standard library. We we have a response, pass that response to a delete cookie function with the my session key, and that'll get us the set cookie header that we need uh, to expire the, the cookie session. Git login's a little more involved, and uh, this is where I think TypeScript starts to shine. Uh, we can see we opted into typing our request handler here. And the reason this is important to you is this is a really nice map to future programmer 
looking at this page wondering, well, I wonder what they're doing. Like, what are they using? This is a pretty nice hint to say, hey, I'm probably relying on cookies and I'm probably relying on query string parameters. And uh, here's our the interface that we designed for our account payload. Um, we're pulling payload out of the JWT library we used, and uh, we're extending that just to say that our JWT is going to have a name, email, and avatar, which I really like. Let's see, I'm just doing a little bit of console log debugging. Um, but we go here and we grab our code. If you have an OAuth request, it always comes with a code which you use to verify. And if we don't have one, we're just going to go back home uh, and say that we didn't find the code. If we did get the code, we're going to trade that for an access token. This is part of the OAuth flow. And then we use that access token to call the Slack API to get the account data. And uh, this is quite nice. It's all typed. And then we'll take that account data and we'll encode it as a cookie, which will set cookie on the headers and the response, uh, just like you do with any old web standard server. And um, and that should be good, we'll be logged in. So we take a quick look at get access token and get account. These are both making API oops, both making API calls into the Slack API. And this is where the web standard side of things really starts to shine. I mean, we're using fetch API directly, really clean. Just give it the Slack API URL with the, the right data and we can get back our access token. Getting the account info is even cleaner. Just call in the Slack API, the token that we got, and then we're going to encode the response into this payload with name, email, and avatar to match our account data shape, uh, the payload shape. And then our set cookie um, string is basically the inverse. What we were doing before, we're going to create a JWT token. We're going to create a cookie. We're going to use the built-in standard library set cookie, and we're just going to return that header to write to the API gateway response. Uh, so OAuth, uh, zero dependencies, maybe 200 lines of code, tops the deno, which is pretty nice. So that is building a little mini OAuth app with deno. And that's kind of the same old new thing. Uh, we've got a JavaScript runtime with a slightly better cold start, a more interesting runtime security model, and a lot of things just built in that you probably already use today. We've got TypeScript out of the box. We've got web standards out of the box. And we've got a comprehensive CLI runtime standard library, all built in and out of the box, which is great. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me. You can find all the source code on my GitHub. Uh, it's Brian LaRue, Arc Example Deno SSR Slack OAuth. That's a mouthful. And uh, if you get a chance, please check out begin.com. And if you want to deploy this to your own AWS, check out arc.codes and star us on GitHub. Thanks.